Hello and welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. So it's October, officially, and uh, I guess we have our first October surfri- surprise. Doug Emhoff, the second gentleman who is looking to be the first gentleman, is being accused of forcefully slapping a woman that he was dating, um, man, about 12 years ago. So they apparently were in France for a film festival that shan't be named, and uh, he, they were drinking. It was into the wee hours of the morning. They were both apparently pretty hammered. Uh, this according to good reporting from the fine folks at the Daily Mail, where I am a columnist. And uh, apparently he felt like she had been flirting with the valet. There was a very long taxi line. She offered the guy 100 euros and maybe a handy or not. That was that was not part of the reporting. That is speculative on my part. And uh, the second gentleman got super jealous and reeled back and apparently slapped her on the face so hard that she spun around. Um, she told friends about it immediately. Um, she hasn't come forward with it. Uh, she has not named herself because she doesn't want to be targeted by the campaign. Uh, but she did tell people, and uh, she was sobbing, uh, according to her side of the story he forced his way into her cab and rode with her she wanted to be by herself obviously you don't want to be with a guy who hits you uh she broke off their relationship they'd only been dating for about three months but if this story is true it says a lot about him because think about how you are when you're drunk not when you've been drinking not when you're slightly buzzed but when you are absolutely hammered are you the kind of person that hits people No, probably not. That was one thing we learned when Mel Gibson was arrested for DUI. And he called the arresting officer, who was a female, sugar tits, which I want to send him a fruit basket as a thank you every single year because I had never heard that phrase before, but I use it in my daily life at least once a week, usually when referring to men. Hey, sugar tits, what's up? So... Mel Gibson also apparently uh, using a lot of anti-Semitic language when he had been inebriated and arrested. And, you know, it also makes you go, well, uh, it turns out when I'm hammered, I'm not an anti-Semite. So if you're not an anti-Semite when you're drunk and you don't go around hitting people, you're probably not like that in your sober life either. But if it's really, really easy for you to hit a woman without warning... Well, you're probably uh, an abusive person in your civilian and sober life. I wouldn't be surprised if this is true, if Doug Emhoff had uh, smacked one of his other partners or, you know, maybe his ex-wife around or if things had gotten violent for him with uh, he's a big guy with a, a smaller person in the past. Um, but this is not the kind of surprise you want to hear because It means that, you know, maybe he's not this squeaky clean person that Jen Psaki says is redefining masculinity for us. So courageous and wonderful of him. Uh, Maybe he's a big, vicious garden variety brute who uses his weight and height and influence to do bad things to women. That makes him a bad person. So if that's the case, and that's the person that Kamala Harris picked for her spouse, and he seems like a really great guy. Tim Walls seems like a really great guy. Tim Walls has horrible policies. Well, maybe Doug Emhoff has horrible tendencies. And maybe he's not the kind of person uh, that should be inhabiting the White House. We know he's not going to be president, but we also know... When someone is that close to power, when someone has proximity to the most powerful job in the world, um, it means that they will also have influence over the president. So if someone's going to slap a girlfriend or impregnate a young nanny, is that really the kind of person you want in the White House? Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. So it made me realize, as you might remember, 
I did confront Doug Emhoff when I met him a year and a half ago at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. There's always a big pre-party or two the night before the actual dinner, the actual nerd prom. And so Doug Emhoff was standing there, and, of course, media types and lefties were going up inserting their heads right up his arnis. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go over and ingratiate myself. I actually have beef with the guy because... Um, where I live in Southern California, we have a Whole Foods pretty close to us. And Kamala Harris and Doug Emhoff have a home in the town next to mine. And so when he goes to the Whole Foods, his Secret Service detail parks at an angle and takes up three parking spots with a single vehicle. They've got multiple vehicles. So that means when he goes to Whole Foods, he snarls up traffic, not only on San Vicente Boulevard, but also on the Whole Foods. So I went up to him and said, hey, man, uh, do me a favor. Next time you go to Whole Foods, have your Secret Service detail, park on the street, or just take one SUV, or better yet, send someone else. So you're not screwing everyone who is also in desperate need of something quick at a good grocery store out of a parking spot and, uh, you know, making it more inconvenient for them. And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, of course, I will do that next time. And I remember his sheepish response thinking, wow, this guy is really a nutless wonder, (laughs) just like Ted Wheeler, the mayor of Portland. Uh, But maybe he's not. Maybe he's got, like, secret angry, rage nards that uh that he pulls out and dangles when he's mad and and he goes ahead and hits women who are smaller than him to keep him in line you know lord knows what else he did with that nanny that he impregnated and uh, pretty much ruined her life because she has been in hiding ever since she also fears retribution if she comes forward um and the daily mail had to source all sorts of other people who had known her and and did a deep dive on her Facebook timeline. Uh, There was a mysterious child. No one knows if she terminated the pregnancy, which, you know, wouldn't surprise me because Kamala Harris and Tim Walls and people like that, they, they not only want abortion to be legal, they now celebrate it, which is super, super creepy. So we don't know what happened to the nanny. We don't know what happened to the pregnancy. We don't know what happened to this alleged victim of Doug Emhoff's drunken rage. But what I do know now is I look at him very, very differently. I don't think he should be applauded. I don't think he has redefined masculinity. I think he's one of those guys that uh, has no problem keeping his women in line and uh that scares me when he will have unfettered access to security and power if his wife is in fact elected to the presidency that from a policy perspective is terrifying in its own right but i think if these things are all true and it looks like you know based on the reporting they probably are he would be a worse first spouse than hillary clinton And that is really saying something. Uh, Will it move voters away from Kamala Harris? Man, if her policies and uh, her, her real values that haven't changed, if that hasn't done it yet, I don't know what else will. This has been Kennedy Saves the World. Save yourself from Doug Emhoff, please. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network.